Okay, so I got a pretty big update for you guys. I've been driving around for the past couple days, um, finding issues and fixing them along the way. Um, so I went ahead and cut down the shifter and made it shorter and more um, manageable to use. Um, I went ahead and put a grip on there and then also mounted the, um, the kill switch. I reinstalled the steering wheel and the column I have the motor completely wired. The motor starts and runs great. Um, I had to make a new shift linkage here because the other one um, snapped at the end. So I basically had this piece of flat bar laying around um, that ended up working great. It just completely replaced it. So now it, um, instead of having one of those weak little um, in pieces like this on there it's literally just the solid piece of quarter inch steel and I had to um, rotate this shift lever forward one click because it was a little bit too short and when I have the seat on here and I go to shift back into like shift down gears um, it actually won't let me shift because it hits the seat Another thing is, is I 3D printed a little adapter to go from quarter inch line to 3 16 line. And that's temporary right now until I can find a reducer. Uh, my local hardware store doesn't have one. I think you guys already saw me install the gas tank. And the only other issue that I'm running into right now is that when I'm going up a steep hill or basically just when I'm going up hills, the chain makes, makes a lot of noise and it kind of sounds like it's slipping. And it's not because the chain's loose, but basically um, because of the torque of the engine, it, the, okay, so it is coming loose, but because uh, when the engine's running, it's creating torque and it's actually flexing my engine plate. So I'm gonna weld in a support going from uh, this frame over to this here to stop it from twisting and that should solve all the issues i have and once i solve that i can go ahead and weld in the seat bottom um, and then this thing should be ready for paint so it's been a few weeks since the last time i made a little video clip here um, and that's mainly because i haven't really done a lot of big things so some of the small things that I've done is this front cover, I actually painted black. And then up underneath here, I had a lot of issues with the steering. Um, so I can't really see, but basically I replaced all of the tie rod ends and different ball joints and stuff like that, which made the steering significantly better, except it still has this play um, and when I'm going about 30 miles an hour, this thing is trying to kill me. <laughs> you hit a bump and it basically steers you into a ditch. So I need to replace the rack gear, uh, which is an un unexpected, unforeseen expense. I also sanded down the hubcaps and gave them a paint job so those look a lot better. I also got the floor welded back in, um, which was really difficult because the metal's so thin I kept burning through. And I also got the bottom of the seat welded back in. So this is finally what you guys, um, this is what it looks like once it's welded back in. And then I went over all the seams with silicone so that it's at least somewhat watertight. And then I painted over it with black so that it wouldn't rust. And I went ahead and cut a hole in this bottom piece so that the shifter tie rod can fit through. And I actually had to remake the shifter tie rod. Um, it was really difficult to get a smooth shift because it had nowhere to s like swivel or spin while you were pushing this back into the to the gear so I put these heim joints on either side of this 5 8 rod um, and it shifts way smoother now I drilled a hole for the the key switch um, I still need to silicone that in place I got the seats put on I think you guys have already seen those the back's not mounted completely yet, uh, but they fit well. They're super comfortable. And then there's more underneath. So let me take the seats off real quick and I'll get back to you guys. All right. So now it's time for the fun part. <laughs> and by fun, I mean not fun at all and sanding. 
So I've started sanding the front here all the way down to bare metal so that I can then spray my filler primer and then uh, go ahead and paint it. Um, and I am absolutely covered in dust. But what's pretty cool is I actually 3D printed um, this sander piece to go on the end of my angle grinder and it's working really well. It literally just rips the paint right, right off the metal and is leaving like a completely smooth finish. Uh, so I'm really excited about that. I'm out here working on paint and I got the front of the golf cart um, with a couple coats of blue and it's looking pretty good. I'm really excited. I am no expert painter by any means. Um, but I basically sanded it down to bare metal, put some filler primer, sanded the filler primer, and now I'm putting uh, the blue on. I didn't bother fixing any of the dents because I just am honestly kind of tired of working on this thing. And I think it's going to look pretty good regardless. But this is as far as I've gotten so far. I'm going to let this dry and then I'm going to do the other side. All right, so I'm completely done with painting and I'm going ahead and starting to put um, the trim back on the golf cart. So we're really getting close to being done with this. So I was about to continue putting the trim along the side, but then I realized that the floor pad and these, these side kick panels need to go in first. Um, so I stopped to do that. So the factory like rubber floor pan looks like absolute garbage, as you can see. Um, so I didn't want to put that back in, but I'm also tired of spending money. So I went to Walmart and got one of these foam sink pads. It was like $10. Um, and basically I'm just going to put that in for the time being because I'm just, I'm getting to the point where, <laughs> where I want to stop working on it. So I'm going to get that thrown in, uh, cut around the different areas and some of the other stuff that I've done is I installed like a little, you know, waterproof um, box for some of the cables. Um, I actually was having, basically I bought an upgraded carburetor um, because why not? I wanted it to run a little bit better and it was making contact with the starter. So I actually cut this um, intake manifold, turned it 90 degrees and then welded it back up so that the carburetor is going sideways now, which works a lot better. Um, I also went from a 14 tooth to a 12 tooth front sprocket um, because this thing basically had no torque. So now it has a little bit more torque. Um, and I think that's basically it. I also installed a rear exhaust bracket. And uh, I think that's it for now. So let me go ahead and throw the floor in and then I'll update you guys again. Hey guys, so I went ahead and installed a 12 inch light bar on the front. I got this off Amazon with a wiring harness for $20. It was basically the cheapest one I could buy. Um, and it works pretty great. So I have it mounted there with two bolts going through the top because I couldn't find a better place to put it. It ends up fitting basically perfect there and there's plenty of clearance behind this plastic piece. And basically I just ran the, the wires down underneath the frame um, into the little wiring box that I made and it came with its own on off switch, but I went ahead and just wired it to wired it to the one that's on my gear shifter. Um, and basically the way that I figured out which wires to go to is I started the engine, flipped the switch on, and then I just basically tested all of the wires that weren't already in use until one of them caused the lights to turn on. What made it a little bit easier is I took this, this off and I looked at what wires were going to the on off switch and I just matched them down there. So that worked out pretty well. Um, another way to do it is this yellow wire right here going into your engine is actually what turns on and off the lights. So if you want to, you can wire directly to this yellow um, and then to a ground and that will work also. Um, but I don't think if you do that, you can use your switch. So it's kind of up to you on that. Um, other than that, I'm all wrapped up. 
and I need to put on some more of the trim and the cup holders, uh, and then I'm done, which is awesome. So stay tuned, I'll give a little bit of a review at the end. All right, everyone, the golf cart is 100% done. So what you see here is what you get, basically. I uh, got the light installed, like I told you in the last video. Um, I finally got the seat completely bolted in so that it, like, I mean, it can be removed, but it's basically in there permanent. Um, I got all of the trim back on, riveted in place. I got these um, seat arm supports bolted back into place. The floor is done. I got the cup holders in, the rest of the trim in. Got it all wired up. And um, let's see. Well, I'm basically now just going to talk about my review of this golf cart. So as it sits, I have roughly $1,500 in this golf cart completely. And now that may sound like a lot to some of you, and it also may sound like a little to some uh, but basically, you can buy a 1988 electric EasyGo golf cart like this, running and driving for about $1,000. So this is about $500 more, but um, it's faster, it's cooler, and for that $1,000, it won't be pretty. You know, it won't have this paint job on it. Um, so I think this is worth $1,500. Now I'm going to try to sell it for two grand. Uh, which I think is very doable. So why did this cost me $1,500? So when I first got this project, I was thinking that I could do it for around a grand, which I would have been extremely happy with because that's how much one of these costs to buy. Now, the, the biggest reason, and this is my biggest piece of advice to anybody that wants to do, to do this project, start with a good, clean golf cart. So I spent roughly $300 just getting this golf cart road ready. So I had to replace all sorts of bushings in the front, um, tie rod end links. I had to replace the rack gear for the steering. I had to replace um, shocks, stuff like that. So that all added up. So when you think about doing this project, keep that in mind. So if I could go back, I would have spent $300 more and got a nicer golf cart because, you know, that would have saved me so much time. Um, and then also there's a lot of things on here that you don't necessarily need, need to do to yours. Like you don't need to put a light bar on the front. You don't need to paint yours. So that $1,500 that I'm talking about, just keep that in mind um, that that's how much it cost to do a complete build. You know, I didn't finish this off. Like there's some trim pieces on the back that I could have bought that were $40 a piece, but I was like, do I need them? No. So I just painted up some metal plates. And then some of the other things that you don't think about. So miscellaneous nuts and bolts. And like I also had to buy these shaft collars, these one inch shaft collars. I bought four of them and they were like $6 a piece. I didn't think about that. I had to buy all sorts of metal. So just, just keep in mind, get a nice clean golf cart to start with. And trust me, you'll, you'll be happy that you did it. There's one last thing that I wanted to mention. So at the beginning of the video, if you remember, I told you that I bought a 36 tooth rear sprocket. Now, the reason that I bought a 36 tooth rear sprocket is because someone else on YouTube did something similar to this and said that he used a 36 tooth sprocket. And he said that this thing would go 42 miles an hour and it has a, a bunch of torque, um, it basically could break the tires loose and that is completely false. So I had a 12 tooth front sprocket and a 36 tooth rear sprocket. And this thing had like no torque and would only go like 25 miles an hour. When I shifted into third gear, third gear was like non-existent. You hit the throttle and it, it did absolutely nothing, which told me that it didn't have enough torque in third gear to do anything. So I went to a 10 tooth front sprocket and it helped a lot. So the top speed is around maybe 28, 30 now. Um, but I'm actually going to go ahead and buy like a 45 tooth rear sprocket, which should make this perfect. So if you're going to do this project, make sure you get at least a 45 tooth rear sprocket. Um, and I think you'll be rolling. Everyone, I got the golf cart at 
the Lake of the Ozarks right now where I'm gonna keep it for the winter. Um, and as you can see, I went ahead and bought the rear plastic trim pieces that I said that I wasn't gonna buy. And then I also wired up some tail lights so that when I'm driving this at night, people know um, that I'm there. I got it running here and I'm gonna go ahead and take it around uh, this oval real quick just so you guys can see how it runs. <laughs> 